Hey there, everyone. Welcome back to this snoring guy. Let's wake him up. He's not in any condition to be questioned. I have to find a way to sober him up. Something in the store? Is there something over here that he knocked over that I can use? Hmm. A box of new stockings. Of new stockings? What it's is this? Ali Sasha's notebook. Ah, that's interesting. It probably contains information about our possible debtors and creditors. I haven't actually looked at it. Bodley. The fruit seller has debts too. She will probably be more cooperative thanks to this piece of information. Look at this Mary girl. Maybe Drower was telling the truth. Mrs. Asher regularly gave money to her alcoholic husband. 52? Wow, she's into him for quite a bit. I never already looked here, but... Yeah, I've looked at everything there is to look at here. I have to wake him up somehow. Perhaps... Nah, no, no, no. Perhaps I can just splash some water on his face. Yes. <laughs> you can hear him snoring from all the way over here. Mrs. Asher lived very simply. Okie dokie. Oh, I can just look in the mirror. The movement's a little clunky. Oh, I didn't mean to. I don't want to check this area. I was hoping to get something on the table. I finished with this up. He's done with that. Perhaps I should go lean into the um the fruit lady because I know that she has debts. I just leave them there. <laughs> of each crime. All right, lady, I'm back for you. Accuser of selling rotten fruit. Your fruit is rotten. What? A foreigner dares to say that? According to the victim's account book, you owed her ten pounds for tobacco and magazines. Contemptuous. That's a lie. She only one pound. I swear. Accuse her of lying. Ask for more explanations. Now, please be so kind as to explain this. Look at my account book. Alice owed me eleven pounds for fruit and vegetables. I may have had a slate at her shop, but she had one at mine. She owed me one pound. And that reminds me I have to get it back from her niece. That is quite enough. Your account book has saved you. But I might ask Chief Inspector Jap to throw you in the cells for one or two nights while he checks your entries. Do you want to go to prison? Prison? Now that's not fair. I haven't done nothing. Be cooperative. In that case, I am counting on your full collaboration. For real? Yes, sir. Of course, sir. Listen, I didn't kill Alice, I swear. But it's true that I did go to the shop yesterday. At what time? Mm-hmm. Six o'clock. She left me a note saying she wanted some strawberries if I got some. I received them late, about six. So I took them over to her. But you did not see her. She wasn't in the shop, so I just put the strawberries on the counter and left. Mm -hmm. I won't accuse her of theft because I have no reason to believe that she stole anything. Did you see anything unusual in the shop? No. Well, maybe one thing. There was always a railway guide on the counter. Alice didn't sell them. Maybe it's the customer who left it there. Hmm. You were not alarmed? I thought Alice had just gone to get her medicine from her room and that she'd be straight back. Honest. You mentioned medicine. Something for her cough. She used to take it a lot. Who do you think killed her? France. 
her scoundrel of a husband. Of course. He's always after her for something. Well, he's a foreigner. Uh, sorry, sir. What I mean is he's German. That's even worse. Oh, my. Did you see Franz Asher enter the tobacco shop late yesterday afternoon? Well, no. But at that time of the day, the streets are packed, and I have better things to do than watch her shop. Oh, all right then, jeepers. Oh, so let's... I might be able to... I have some clues. Uh, she smoked, she owed... Alice Asher 10 pounds, owed her money. She left some strawberries at the tobacco shop around 6 p.m. and she didn't see anyone. That, he was a cabinet maker. He doesn't work at the moment. Notorious alcohol with a violent, aggressive temperament. We need to find a way to sober up France. Libby, can I get that bottle? I'll just borrow your bottle a moment. Take it. It's yeah. what Alice used to sober up her husband. But try not to empty the bottle. Why would I empty it? I figured I was just going to wave it over his face. Get At what time was the murder committed? Um, can we reduce the time range? So... Uh-huh. She was killed between 5.30 and 6. Boom. Let's go question her deadbeat husband. They were supposed to be separated, but they were still married. Not divorced. Oh boy. He's not in any condition to be questioned. Oh. I have to find a way to sober him up. Here you go, bud. Ugh, that's vinegar. Mes amis, I can say without a doubt that poor Mrs. Asher was killed between half past five and six. Killed when the street was packed with people. That's rather bold. I've been talking to the neighbors and... No one's seen anything? Or rather it's anything and everything. Am I wrong? <sighs> no. Bien. We must Bien. kill this villain Asher before he falls asleep again. Bien. All right, bud. They ought to be more careful about who they hire in the police. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's take a look at this guy. This man is in rather a bad state. He's got a black eye. He's got a busted lip. And his clothes aren't looking great either, but he's got bruised knuckles. Oh, his, his clothes are torn. This man has been fighting and he smells of alcohol. Sounds like a winner. All right, bud. Ugh. I just want to have a conversation with you. I asked what he was doing yesterday evening. What were you doing yesterday at the time of the crime? Can't Can't recall. Recall. Suspicious. Accuse him of drunkenness. He had been drinking again. <laughs> the occasional slap, sir. That's all. And you cannot even remember how you ripped the coat? I got it stuck in a door. He sounds like Johnny Depp. <laughs> Make fun of him being beaten up. <laughs> the truth is that someone gave you a good beating. A beating? No way. All right, he tore my coat and gave me a black eye. You see the state of him. Very interesting. Who is the other that you struck? Probably best if I tell you everything. Yesterday afternoon, I met Roderick Tanner. We'd bet on a dog fight together. An illegal bet, naturally. Yes, naturally. sir. <laughs> Our dog won. Roderick got the money, but he refused to give me my share. And you thought about it. What time was this? In the evening, about six, I think. We were on the other side of town. Truthful. You see, I couldn't have killed my wife. I believe him. Well, Let's I believe he didn't kill his wife. Let's and get our brain cells to work.
What was Mrs. Asher doing when she was killed? She was taking a packet of cigarettes from the shelf. The murderer probably pretended to be a customer. He hit the shopkeeper from behind as she turned around to serve him. Let us now try and get our brand cells to work. Looks like we're piecing this whole thing together. Right here and now. How do we explain the presence of an EVC guide? It was left by the murderer as a signature. The murderer deliberately left behind this ABC as a signature. The absence of fingerprints and the fact that it is open at letter A for Endover leaves little doubt. I figured the A stood for her. Asher's alibi Asher. appears to be confirmed. All the same, I'm going to call and check that he did have a fight with this Tanner on the afternoon of the murder. You can never trust this sort of chap. Mm. One thing is certain, Asher was a ruffian who used to beat his wife. But he's not very educated. It certainly was not him who wrote the letter signed ABC. Let's resume, Hastings. We know the murderer pretended to be a customer. He did not kill her for money, that appears to be certain. I agree with you on that point. And the murderer left an ABC guide as a signature. Therefore, it's likely he wrote the letter. Indeed, but that doesn't explain why and how he did it. You are quite right. Why he did it is a mystery. But as for how he did it, we do know enough to try and reconstruct the events. <laughs> Ego points. Oh boy. Reconstruct the crime's course of events by selecting the action that the killer may have executed. Reconstruction. The killer enters the shop. Mm hmm. Mrs. Asher turns around to greet her customer. Mm hmm. Ask for. The murderer asks her for some tobacco. With a giant he hammer in his hand. Him, he seizes the opportunity to strike her. Do you see that giant hammer? He then places the ABC on the counter before leaving. The ABC was not found like that. We are not far from the solution, these things. Would you mind if we thought about it a little more? Whoops. Reconstruction failed. The killer enters the shop. Okay. We're here. We approach her and ask for some cigarettes. Mrs. Asher turns around to greet a customer. The murderer asks Look her for some Look at the handle on that, that she turns her back to hammer him. man. He seizes the opportunity to strike her. Turn around. He then places the ABC upside oh, down. Oh, the book is turning him. around. I thought the killer himself Everything was appears around. to match the crime scene, mon cher Hastings. That is exactly what happened. Successful, yay. Oh my goodness. 50 trophies. Asher has a strong alibi and we don't have any other suspect. But what was the point of this crime? She had no debts. She gave Franz Asher money regularly. She wasn't owed money. Nobody stood to gain anything. No doubt about it. The murderer is insane. Well... Mm. And I fear that we had not heard the last of him. Technically, I all murderers are pretty for insane. Once. Bien. Let's go back to London. If we hurry, we should catch the two past seven train. Are you coming? No, unfortunately, I have to talk with Andover police. See you soon, then. Are you coming, Hastings? Let's go home. There's nothing for us here. Well, I guess we solved it? Question mark? We have no idea who did it or why, but we know who didn't do it. Well, do you have any idea about the killer's identity? 
Hmm. The crime was committed by a man of medium height, with red hair and suspicious eyes. He has a slight limp on the right <laughs> foot and a wart just below his shoulder blade. What a jokester. Poirot! Mon ami, what do you want? You fix upon me a look of dog-like devotion and demand of me a pronouncement à la Sherlock Holmes. Now for the truth. I do not know what the murderer looks like, nor where he lives, nor how to set hands upon him. What shall we do, then? Nothing. What can we do? Nothing? Do not be so impatient, Hastings. The killer will manifest himself soon enough. We're gonna have to wait for him to kill I someone else. I heard the postman. Maybe there's some news. I would go and see. And he's actually bragging. Like, he even said that he was gonna kill somebody this day. Or, well, the 21st. Go grab the letter. Perhaps it is the killer. Once again. It is blank? Oh. They always show Dear me everything Mr. back Poirot. first. Well, what do you think? I believe that I won this round. The end of our affair went like clockwork, don't you feel? But the fun has only just started. I would like to draw your attention to Bexilon Sea on the 25th of this month. We're having a crazy time. Best wishes. A, B, C. Oh boy. The next crime will be in Bexil. We must warn Jap to Scotland Yard. Did the letter indicate anything that might help the police? To be honest, I think we can already guess something about the next victim. But I need to think about it a little more. We need to let people die before I tell you what I know. Bexel starts with a B. Compare the new letter to the first one. Let us compare. Thinking. We must use our brain. Let us examine this more closely. The eyes are very um, distinct. Certain characters in the two letters may have similar defects. Mm -hmm. The I's and the A's do. Yes, this I is weird. Do I have to click all the I's? Yes, this I is weird. The A's are also a bit off. Yes, the A appears to be quite unusual. Andover. Let's see, on the 25th. Right. Let us compare this with the other letter. So I shall click on this letter and then click on That's an right. A. That's right. The A characters in the two letters do indeed have the same defects. I have to find some other similar defects to confirm my theory. The eye is the other defect. I just have to click an eye. Yes, this eye is weird. And then click an eye in the other letter. Right. Let us compare this with the other letter. And there's only one eye. So, yes, the eye characters in the two letters do indeed have the same defects. I have to find some other similar defects to confirm my theory. All right, let's go with the W's because the W's are very, um, mm, the W is not printed properly. Mm hmm. So much easier right. to let us compare this with the other letter. So much easier to uh, find this stuff when people are using typewriters. Of course. The W characters in the two letters do indeed have the same defects. My theory was right. These two letters were written with the same typewriter. Mm-hmm. That they were. Both letters were written on the same typewriter and show the same characteristics. You surprise me, Poirot. You usually ignore material proof. <laughs> but there is nothing Evidence. unusual about these Jeez. cases. Things. Nothing must be overlooked. Evidence is for Let us wimps. Let try and get our brain cells to work. He says brain, but the subtitles say little gray. What is so special about Andover's murder? The Andover murder. The ABC guide. Um, theft is not a motive for the crime? Mm -hmm. 
Hand over ABC guide. Yeah, the victim's name started with an A as well. I know when Alice Asher started with the letter A. Can we guess? What can we guess of the next victim? Everything that was in this letter. The next victim's name may start with a B. First Thank name or last well. name, Have though. you found something? Or both names. Yes, I believe so. But I am afraid it is not enough to stop the murderer. Let us go and see Chief Inspector Chap. I will explain there. Perhaps we will be able to figure that out when the next person dies. No, I'll leave Whitehaven. <laughs> All right. Uh, mm -hmm. Let us go. We must leave. I'm going to go through the door. Bad accents. Oh, uh -huh. uh -huh -huh. <coughs> <laughs> Go to Scotland Yard. Alright. I know that I can talk to this guy, but I don't want to. I feel like he's like a hint buddy, so... I don't need you, bud. To Scotland Yard, please. I don't need you and your hints. Uh, inform Jap about the, the B letter. The letter B and the B letter. Is this Scotland Yard? It appears to be. This guy is really like, please talk to me. I'm just like, no. I'm going in the outdoor. Wow. That was a lot of, like, transition just to get us to an office that they totally could have just stuck us in. Let's take a look at him. From behind? Jap appears to be snowed under. I assume that means busy. Piles of files. Cup of cold tea and the phone's off the hook. Chap appears to already be overloaded with work. My news is not going to improve matters. How? Well, okay. I mean, let's say how is I'm supposed to know Overall, the tea was cold, but I am there was no we have steam. Some bad news. I have just received another letter signed ABC. The next crime will be on the 25th in Bexilon C. Are you completely sure it's from the same person? Yes. I have compared the two letters. There is no doubt about it. I suppose you think he's going to carry out his threats. I yep. fear so. Mm-hmm. No reason not to Good believe God, it. Good God, Poirot. Bexil is very busy at this time of year, and we have no idea who the next victim will be. Mm-hmm. Uh, then, uh, the next victim's name will start with a B. I suspect that the name of the second victim will start with B. What on earth makes you think such a thing? I thought about it when I, I saw the name everything. Asher clearly written of the shop door of the unfortunate woman who was murdered in Andover last month. When I received the letter mentioning Bexil, I deduced that the victim, like the town, might have been chosen by alphabetical order. So, it's an alphabet fiend. I'm going to have a list drawn up of all the people whose name starts with B. I hope there aren't too many of them. Oh yeah, I'm sure it's going to be a short list. Yeah. We should leave you to work, Chief Inspector. You have a few days to prepare yourself. Thank you for coming, my friends. Anytime. I'm always ready to ruin someone's day. Poirot? Chief Inspector Jap, your call does not bode well. Mm. Indeed, we have just found the body of a young woman on the beach in Bexhill. An ABC was placed on the body. We'll be there as soon as possible. We are coming to the beach. It is a vacation. The English Channel. So many loading screens. 25th. Wow, it's supposed to be the day of. The day of the murder is 25th. No? Bexhill is a delightful town. It would be nice to come back and visit. I do not entirely agree. Walking at the beach damages my shoes. And it hurts my knee. Uh, so the years have not spared you, my friend. It's the same for all of us. Yeah. That is exactly what sucks. I said to myself when I saw you back from your travels. Poirot! Do not be offended, Hastings. I can see Jap waiting for us. And from his face, I would say that things are not looking good. <laughs> well, I'm pretty sure someone died, so... There's really no reason for a party. Walrus mustache... There's a taxi here. Can I leave? 
Or no, that was the taxi I definitely ended up taking to uh, Scotland Yard. Are we gonna talk to him, or we, do we have to look at him again? Oh, look at they just kind of. No, why does he How always do approach do, people gentlemen. from the back? That's weird. Chief Inspector, I fear your admirer has struck again, Poirot. We haven't yet identified the victim, but it's a young woman, twenty to twenty-five years old. Death occurred last night between half past eleven and one o'clock. And we found an ABC guide on the body. Oh, Was she pretty? Come on, Poirot, that's rather out of place. It has no bearing on the murder. Are you certain? For a woman, it is often the most important thing. It often decides her destiny. The body hasn't been moved. You can see for yourself. Has the press been informed? Not yet, but I'm planning to. I haven't yet informed them about the presence of the ABC guide in Andover. Nobody has reported a young woman missing? Not for the moment. No witnesses, I imagine? Indeed. We've asked everybody who may have met a young woman fitting her description last night to come and see us, but... I have little hope of gaining anything from it. It's early days, Chief Inspector, and the news may not have spread around the town yet. I hope you're right, Hastings. So what happened, in, well, okay, so if today's the 25th and it was supposed to happen on the 25th, chances are that she died, that's probably not in the notebook, chances are that she died after midnight, midnight or later, because that would make it the 25th. This crap. Shoe crap. All right, let's take a look at the body. Oh, double click, he quickens pace. So... By first look, she was strangled, probably with her belt, and she has no shoes, question mark? These marks have been left by a rope or a braided cloth. Like this one? A braided silk belt. It may have belonged to the victim. There are seven things to click on. She has a key. This key is too small to be one for a house. Without a doubt, it is for a padlock. This key is too s- uh. With the B open, no doubt. Bexel. The guide is open at the page for the Bexel train times. Mm-hmm. The young woman wasn't wearing shoes or a coat and was not carrying a bag. That's strange. That is strange. Either the murderer stole her belongings, or she put them somewhere safe. Maybe so that she could bath. Or bathe. I'm trying to find a spot in this area here that's not the book, or the key, or her neck. Apart from the marks on her neck, there are no signs of the struggle. She didn't manage to hit her assailant. We took the key, I see. I feel like the young this is... woman wasn't. Yeah. Either the murderer. Uh huh. Um. She was a great beauty. Strange that chap didn't notice it. Let us now try and get our brain cells to work. Alrighty. How was the victim killed? So she was strangled. Mm -hmm. Victim was strangled by surprise with her own belt. The poor child must have been strangled with his bread belt. Unfortunately, in view of the fabric, it is unlikely that we will find any prints. Again, let's now try and get our brain cells to work. I'm surprised that they can use fingerprinting. What are the common points between the Andover murder and the one in Bexhill? Um, that's not true. There was an. Oh. We'll use the two ABC guides. Killer signs his crimes with an ABC guide. Are the crimes in Andover and Bexel the work of the same murderer? Yes. Uh, yeah, uh, probably. Probably because the press doesn't know. There were two murders. 
premeditated carried up with the same person. The medical officer should confirm that the victim was strangled with her own belt. By surprise. That's what I thought. So she took off her she belt already. She shows the usual signs of strangulation. With a little luck, we'll find Prince this time. You are too optimistic, Hastings. Our killer is far too meticulous for that. Identify the victim. I can look there at the There is no ocean. doubt about it. Bexhill has one of the most beautiful beaches in the area. Are we going to look at the body again? Oh, I have a key to a padlock. Look at these nifty little sheds on the beach. We don't have those here. These seem useful. This hut is locked. Oh, I have a key, though. There's a six on it. So this one's six, it's just upside down. The six tipped so it looks like a nine. But if you look at the order, it's five, six, seven. Thinking. Mm hmm. The number is upside down. This is definitely at number six. Up. What is this here? That's etched in. It will not accept my key. A dual locking padlock. I need to find the code and then insert a key. Oh, I think the code is under the, the um... Firstly, I have to remove the padlock. It's whatever this is here that was under the six. It looks like seven, maybe it's 715. Seven, one, five, A. Ho ho. There we go. Oh. Can I open the door? Oh, it's not slid all the way open. There we go. Oh, so she, um, hmm. Now I'm trying to figure it out as we go here. It oh, definitely right was here. here that the victim left her belongings. The purse is full. Yet again, we can dismiss theft as the motives for the murder. Why is there a picture here on the Here is the watch she must have removed to prevent it from getting wet. A top brand lipstick. She liked to take care of her appearance. Yeah, most ladies do. As well as a photo of the victim with some company. It could be useful to me. A lead. Betty's first day at work. Mom is very proud of you. Elizabeth Barnard. Ginger cat restaurants. Betty's first day at work. Mom is very proud of you. Elizabeth Barnard. 7 August 1931. So, the young lady did have a name starting with B. Her last and she name worked did. as a ginger cat, an establishment that must be slightly further along the beach. Okie dokie. Jap has gone to the police. The victim has been identified and her family had reported her disappearance. She was called Elizabeth Barnard, mainly Betty. She worked as a ginger cat to the cafe Betty slightly Barnard. further along the beach. But Poirot, how on earth? Never mind. Do you have her address? Yes, she lived with her parents on the street leading to the beach, number 22. Shall we go? You are far too impatient, Hastings. Let the poor people take in the news first. Let us go and visit the cafe where Betty worked. Betty Barnard. So her, her name to... Especially if you consider her nickname was a double B. You can cl well, I guess you can. I was gonna say you can clearly see her from the sidewalk over here. Do I use the cab? I can't walk over here. Clearly, those walks are uh, those rocks are far too treacherous. Ooh. 
Whoops. Oh no. Okay, so I can look at the cab. Could it be the same buildings as on the victim's photo? Yes, it's got the restaurant name. Getting closer, oh, further, closer, closer. There's a newspaper kiosk. There's that thing there. The name of the restaurant is in the picture. This is what? definitely where the photo I found in the hut was taken. The name of the restaurant is in the picture. Okay. Chigaman. Now what do we do? Go to the ginger cat. Oh, it's this place, no? This is definitely where the photo I found in the hut was taken. So should I walk this way? Is the establishment actually over here? Oh, I didn't realize it was right there. I thought I had gotten in the cab. Let's go inside. I don't need you, hint buddy. Not yet, anyway. Let's see, okay. I'll be with you in a minute, gentlemen. Thanks, Miss Marion. Hopefully we catch this guy before he gets to M's and you don't move to an M place. This place is so, like, it's small. This is a well-laid table. But very upscale. Nothing is out of place and, above all, no, no creases. creases. I'm just taking a little... Shall I check myself out in the mirror again? What's over here? Behind the giant curtain. Let me just clean that earwax out real quick. Let's take a look at her. They often want me to look before speaking. <laughs> Something tells me that she's the owner of the ginger cat. Perhaps the fact that she's a ginger. Her strict appearance. This she's woman must the be the owner of the ginger cat. It looks like something is bothering her. My employee didn't show up to work today. I don't know what's wrong with her. How can I help you? A hot chocolate and a tea for my friend, please. Ooh, I'll bring I like it straight style. away. Jeepers criminy. All right, well, while you're gone, I'm just going to poke around. Don't mind me. I need to know the time range during which Betty was working on her own. Okay, so let's look. Betty, from 11 to 7.30. 9 to 4, 7 to 5. So it looks like she was on her own from 5 to 7.30. Yeah. These are the different waiting staff's bills. Which ones were written by Betty? Oh, wait, let's take a look at this again. Uh-huh. Penmanship, I'm pretty good at. Um. Wow. Okay, hold on, I gotta look again. She didn't do this one. 100%. I don't think she did this one. These... Four might be her. I should consult. Yeah, let's take a look at one more time because these f these four here appear to be done by the same person. One, two, three, four. But I'm not sure if she's that person. These two were done by the same person. Uh, yeah, these two were done by the same person as well. And then these two were done by the same person. So it's, she might be that second one. She's got such... She's got thin, cursive penmanship. Assuming she's the one that wrote in her own times. Mark has the neater one. Big and incursive. This is her for sure. I should consult the red...
Unless it's this one? I should consent it. Oh, maybe I should click on the register. Where is Betty? She's right here. Betty worked from 11 a.m. to 7.30 p.m. Would she have been alone at any time during her service? Yes. She would have been alone from 5 to 7. Betty worked from 11... 5 to 7.30. She was by herself. So, I mean, if you really want to... This one's definitely hers because it was done at 7.20. This one was hers. Most probably a single man. A whiskey lover. Maybe this the one... murderer? Just based this on bill penmanship? This have been written by Betty. There is probably another one. This one was her too. No, something's not right. Betty was alone at just one of these two times. Oh, okay. So... We're just looking for the two she did when she was alone. So that's these two. She definitely wrote this one. Most probably a single man. A whiskey lover. Maybe the murderer? So we're looking for the bill she wrote this when she was alone. May so that's one, and then this is the other one. Most probably a family. Betty served a family and a man on his own. A whiskey drinker. Maybe the murderer. This information will help me to progress. What makes you think the murderer ordered anything at all? What? Gentlemen, what are you doing? Nothing. We are searching for clues, mademoiselle. Nothing. My name is Hercule Poirot. I am a detective, and this is Captain Hastings. Does Betty Barnard work here? That is correct. She should have been here a while ago. Punctuality is the first rule of politeness. I agree. I fear that Miss Barnard will not be coming today. She's dead. She has just been found dead on the beach a few hundred meters from the cafe. How oh. awful. Poor young thing. What happened? She was killed. She appears to have been murdered. Yep. This is most distressing. How this will affect my business, I shudder to think. Wow. This woman. Well, let's just ask her what she knows what about Betty. What can you tell us about Miss Barnard? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Miss Barnard was my employee. Her private life was none of my business. You did know, at least, that she had a young man. Indeed. Suspicious. Ask if her gentleman friend might have attacked her. Ask if the man in the photo is her gentleman friend. This photo was found. Is this him? Yes, that's him, all right. But I haven't seen him for some time. Preoccupied. Say that young people no longer have morals. Yeah, let's try and side with her. That's obviously something she I would find as young well. people today very hard to understand. You needn't tell me that. A few weeks ago, they argued just outside the cafe. Imagine what my customers must have thought. Sympathies about difficulty of keeping a respectable establishment. I hope for you that it was an isolated incident. It must be difficult to keep a respectable establishment if your staff shows themselves to be so shameless. The young man only made a scene the once. Jealousy, no doubt. It must be said the young girl was very pretty. Thank you for your time, Mademoiselle Merion. You have been of great help. The customer who ordered the whiskey might provide us more information. He may have been the last one to see Betty alive. That's plausible. It is an interesting idea, Stings. Maybe he is a regular guest. What do you think, mademoiselle? I don't think so. Our regular guests tend to order tea and cakes. At this time of the year, there are a lot of tourists about you never see again. That's what I thought. Time to visit Betty's home. Go to Betty's house at number two on the street. No thanks, hint buddy. She doesn't know very much about her employees' private lives. Oh wow, we're carrying all the victims with us. The victims and the, uh... Well, we know that none of these people murdered them, so they're witnesses now, not suspects. 
I want to know, can I click this curtain over here? This giant curtain. No, okay. Alright, take it back. Let's walk out. We out. We out of this piece, boys. <laughs> A Cupid Bairo. Okay, so she lives in 22. I have no idea what that is. I assume it's within walking distance. I can't walk very far, though. Oh, maybe I should stick with my buddy? Oh, 22's over here! Because this is 23, so that makes this one 22. Let's go in. She works. Oh yeah, that's right. Double click to, to quick and pace. Get out of my way! I'm gonna walk through this wall. Oh, alright. Or I'll take the door. How do you do, mademoiselle? My name is Hercule Poirot. I know you. You're that Poirot? detective we hear all about. I do huh? not know if that is a compliment, but I will take it as one for now. What? You are Betty's sister, I believe. Yes. My name is Megan. Can we come in? Please do. Megan Bernard. My parents are at the police station. I doubt they'll be up to speaking to you later. Do not worry. We will not bother them. Just you. Did you know your sister's plans for yesterday evening? No. I arrived by train this morning. My parents called me in a panic when they discovered that Betty had disappeared. She went out last night, but she didn't tell them where she was going. What was your last conversation about? Her new dress. She wanted a pair of black stockings to go with it. Mother brought her a pair the very day it happened. She was crying. And to think that Betty never even wore them. Poor mummy. Hmm. It's interesting because there was a pair of black stockings at the last crime scene. I don't think it's I don't think it's related. That would be such a stretch, it but would not be polite to visit the house without being invited to do so. Yeah, so I can't look at anything. Is that what you're telling me? She's looking at her cell phone, too. The Barnard appeared to make music a priority <laughs> in that budget. Uh-huh. Because there's a violin here. And then there's a piano. Up here. Uh... They're Warm all furniture. modest, but the Barnards are definitely music lovers. The finer things. Oh, it's... Oh, let me check myself out in a mirror. Hey, baby. Gotta make sure I'm looking good for the ladies. Make sure that the stash is where it's supposed to be. Spike a little up, a little bit at the ends. Let's take a look at her. What is she feeling at the moment? Uh, she, don't, she doesn't look sad. She looks kind of okay. Hard to stare. She's got a picture that didn't take. It's a photo, okay. Mr. Poirot, I don't like being stared at. If you have something to say, would you please say it to me? Uh. Betty's older sister is not just sad, she's angry. Why so angry? It's only a game. Um, hmm. Let's ask if Betty had a fiance. Your sister had a fiance, I believe? Yes, he's called Donald Fraser. A very nice man. Tense. Ask if Betty saw other men. Let's ask if he had a quick temper. A hot-headed man, by all accounts. You are quite wrong, detective. Suspicious. Don is serious and reliable, and has a good position at Court and Brunskill estate agents. He would have made Betty a very good husband. Hmm. 
jealous? Maybe? Oh, excuse me, I have to answer that. She's so distracted. But of course. I'm trying to ask you questions, Eshi's room lady. is opposite the stairs on the first floor. Feel free to take a look if you think it might be useful. So, the first floor means this young woman the is far too upstairs. clever not to have anything else for us. Do you think she's hiding something? Yes. That is what I'm trying to find out. Surely you don't think she did it? No. I did not say anything of the sort. But young women always ruin your judgment, Hastings. Who knows, maybe Megan was jealous of her attractive young sister. That's what it seems like right now. I see. She may have had her sights on the inheritance. Or maybe she was in love with Donald Fraser. We have to study all scenarios, even the most unlikely. But I doubt that Mr. and Mrs. Barnard are rich enough to justify murder. While I try and get Miss Barnard to talk, I would like you to try and find Donald Fraser. It should be easy to find the estate agents where he works. Bring him to the Ginger Cats. I would like to talk with him before the Chief Inspector finds him. <laughs> before he meddles up my uh, investigation. Betty's room, I do believe, is upstairs. The first floor implies the second floor. What? Oh, she was she was a vocalist, one would assume. Or at least she played an instrument. It looks like Betty was also a music lover. The same as a family. There's a metronome. There's a microphone. And there's some sheet music. Without a doubt, Betty used to sing. Oh, the thing at the ginger cat was probably mm. a stage. A box of new stockings. It looks like Betty has a very busy life. Cinema ticket for the film Impossible Love. An invitation. Well, a menu for a slash restaurant. But he liked luxury and going out. And being as pretty as she was, she probably did not have any problem getting herself invited. Yeah. She was a star, I tell you, a star. Looking at all the clothes she took out, Betty clothes. must have had a problem deciding what to wear. Maybe she had a date? Could be. There's a shotgun shells on the, uh, the nightstand. Oh my goodness, this guy. He's so vain. Look in a mirror every time I click on one. I got some points for it, though. The shotgun shells lipstick. I know they're not shotgun shells. Oh, there's some, some a box and some booze on this table over here. Or maybe it's not booze. This small key should be useful to me. Medicine to prevent voice loss. Did Betty have problems with her voice? Someone else that acquired medicine. Hmm. Interesting. Something on this clock bothers me. Could it be this giant thing sticking out the side over here? This wooden panel is blocked. I can't open it. Of course you can't. This metal disc is stuck. Okie dokie. It's a clock of many wonders. What a strange mechanism. I don't think it serves to turn the hands. Um... don't know what that does. The cogs are blocked by these wooden panels. I don't, like, see anything happening. This light is on. Is that relevant? Like, I'm not sure how these affect the cogs. You know what I'm saying? The cogs are blocked by... Uh-huh. The cogs are blocked... Oh, by these wooden panels. The cogs are... But I don't know how to... to move... 
Well, this cog isn't blocked by a wooden panel. The cogs are blocked. Oh, by the whole, like, frame. Um, maybe you have to push them all in? You okay? Towards the inside? No? No? Um, I don't see any the sort of cogs are blocked. I don't see any sort of indication as to what position this thing is supposed to be in. The cogs are blocked. Hmm. Mayhaps we will find. Can we find something else to play this with? This wooden panel is blocked. I want to see the bottom. It won't show me the bottom, though. Maybe I'm not meant to see it. This wooden panel is. Hmm. I wish to close it again. I'm not sure I understand. Let's take a look at this thing. All right, so. One would presume it has something to do with... Wait, let's reset the puzzle. A record sleeve with an unwritten title. Betty must have recorded a demo. I'd be interested to hear it. A demo. I'm so glad subtitles are on. Alright, let's try this clock again. Something on this clock bothers me. Okay. So let's look at the way it's initially set up. What a strange mechanism. I don't think it serves to turn the hands. So these two are in the middle and these two are on the left. I feel like it has to do with something you can see on the gear itself. Because you can see part of it on this gear. But you can't see anything on, like, this part of the gear is covered. So, perhaps... This one should be in the middle. This the one cogs should... are blocked. Yes, yes. This one should be full to one side, and these two should be full to the other side. All right, let's try these two on the other side. Hmm, that's not it. There's also a dot here. The cogs are blocked by... Um, there's a picture here. Can't use that. There's a key here. Can't use that. <laughs> All right, I'm going to throw everything I have at this puzzle to try and figure out what it is. I'm pretty sure I should have everything I need to solve it now. Click on one of the direct here. Wait, what? Okay, so I... Wait. What? Okay. So I kind of looked this up just a little bit because... This is kind of ridiculous. There's no reason you would think that you should click on this little tiny wooden thing here. This leg is not what attached. I don't know what to this do. This leg though. is not what it Hmm, could the screw be slightly loose? Break that sucker off, man. Hmm, could the so I'm looking at a guide because this is what it's come to. Uh, yeah, and can I do this one too? Because there's, no, oh, I can. There's no way. Yes. It should be possible to open the wooden panel. I would have figured out that I had to do that. So I'm gonna open the wooden panel. Look. A key. It's got a key. I'm gonna grab the key. This Clearly. could be useful. There's a hint over here. Eh, I wanna see the hint. Three, one, two, two. Okay, so that ugh, is my solution to this. Uh, I don't remember what order that was in. 
to... I had no context for this puzzle. Got it. At least the first part of it, apparently. Uh, but that was a little ridiculous. Clicking on that one tiny piece, and then even figuring out that you have to click and drag it to move it was a bit much. Like, I understand now why certain people- I definitely people... need an object to make these cogs turn. Oh, I have a key. Um, it's, oh boy. Do I have to do this in order? I understand now why certain people are griping about certain puzzles. I don't think I can, I can only use the key here. Ah, something clicked on the front of the clock. That was a bit ridiculous. I agree with people that are saying that some of the puzzles are a bit, a bit over the top. So let's take a look this at this. This could be useful. Betty, I enjoyed a wonderful evening in your company, and I hope that we will see each other again very soon, D. My dearest Betty, I know that your art is already spoken for, but you are the most beautiful dancer I have ever had the pleasure of meeting, and I am impatient to see you again, Adrian. She's a dancer. Okay, and now that we've read all of that pitiful information, we're gonna stop because that puzzle was, mm, I had to look it up. I'm not gonna lie, you know, I'm not gonna front. I looked up a little hint on where to go next and they spe specifically said, click this thing, this tiny speck in the upper right hand corner, which would have been easier if they had distinguished the hand icon away from being a hand icon in between the face of the clock and that part of the clock, but they didn't. So there was no reason for me to believe that it was a whole other area to click on. Anyway, I digress. Um, I'm going to stop here. <laughs> Thanks for watching if you have. I hope you stick around for more and I'll see you in the next one.